everybody. My name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, so much of our lives, all of our lives, I don't think there's anyone of any race, color, creed, religion, age, who doesn't go through in some way during every day, during every week, during every month, the trials and tribulations of what it is to be a human, the highs, the lows. And again, always there's something in a human being as, as, a, as a giant human family with all its flowers and all its colors and all its seeming differences on the surface. There's a, a universal hunger to know God, to know the truth, to know that experience. And, and each one of the religions has at its root love. And, and the amazing part of all the, 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 the teachers, the, the root, the, the people who came in and all the religions were started from, was there, if you hear people talk about them, they might have had, a, have had trials and tribulations in their lives. But ultimately what people said about them is they're incomprehensible in a way. Love, their compassion. And that's what we want, and we want to have that experience, so much so that the differences between us seem to fall away, or are so unimportant in the magnificence of that experience of the oneness, of the love, of the truth of what we are. And for people who've watched Bridging Heaven and Earth before, know that you know, we've done this show year after year after year, show after show, and we've had all different kinds of people from all different walks of life, from all different traditions, young, old, black, white, red, yellow, green, I guess, I guess maybe not green, I, I would see that. But, uh, and every one, the root of every one, because those are the people who we get drawn to and we want to share their love on the set and we want to share their love with you out there, is that somehow in their experiencing of their tradition, of their religion, of their Buddhism, Hinduism, Judaism, they've come into that experience of the infinite love of God. And in that, we are all one. We are all the same love. And tonight, again, we have somebody with us who has a certain tradition, who was born a certain way on a, in a certain lifestyle, with a certain history. Maria Yesperu is a spiritual teacher, she's a healer, she's a storyteller, she's a ceremonialist. Uh, she was born on a Native American uh, reservation, the Apache Reservation, I guess, the Kiero Apache Reservation. And yet somewhere, somehow in her longing to know truth, she came to know that universal love. And so while she writes about her experience, which came out of that tradition and that ceremony and that history. She's come to know the love that we all want. And we're just so delighted to have her here with us tonight. She's the author of at least two extraordinary books, probably I think three or four, but the two that I'm more familiar with are uh, Prayers and Meditations of the Kiero Apache and Legends and Prophecies of the Kiero Apache. But if you see the books, if you read the books, if you feel the vibration of the books, what you'll see is the book is about the love. That how do we get to the love? How do we go beyond tradition into that one family of humankind, that one family of connection, that one family of love? And again, that's what this show is about, to, to let us go one more step, one inch deeper into that knowing. And that's why Maria came, to share her gifts and her experience and her tradition and her ceremonies with us. It's only to open the door to love. And as we normally do, we have extraordinary music videos. I think we've shown them before. We were very fortunate. These are the videos of Kate Wolf. She uh, was just gaining national recognition. Uh, she was repopularizing folk music uh, in, in California and the whole United States before she passed away. She got cancer and then passed away reasonably quickly in 1986. 
and she's still a seminal figure. And when you hear her music, there's such a purity and love to her music. And so again, bridging heaven and earth is, is in essence about love. And another spoke on the wheel to bring us to that center where we all live, where we all truly live. So as we normally do before Maria joins us, before we see the videos, let's just settle in. If you know how to meditate, join me in a short meditation. And then, you know, it's time to, to go deeper, to go more, to, to realize more, because we are that. We are made of love. That is it. So please join me in a short meditation and just relax, and then we'll, we'll start the show. Okay, so we're going to start tonight's show with a, a really magnificent song by Kate Wolf. It's called Give Yourself to Love, written and performed by Kate Wolf, and then Marie is going to be with us. Give Yourself to Love. Kind friends all gather around. There's something I would say. What brings us together here has blessed us all today. Love has made a circle that holds us all inside. Strangers are as family, loneliness can't hide. You must give yourself to love. Love is what you're after Open up your hearts to The tears and laughter And give yourself to love Give yourself to love Hi, 
Hi, we're on the set with Maria. Welcome. Thanks for coming. Oh, thank you. This is exciting. Yeah. So how did you learn to give yourself to love? I mean, I know that's yeah. what you're all about. How, how did, you know, in your yeah. start almost anywhere? I know it's a long story. But. Well, I started out um, following my grandpa around, you know. He was a holy man for the And Apache this is on tribe. the Indian Reservation. On the Indian Reservation. And I have to... Just Go ahead. back up and correct you just a little bit. Go. I was actually born in Los Angeles. Oh my God! <laughs> and I went to live on the reservation when I was two weeks old. I think that's so a good I enough start. I would say. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't that far off. Okay. All yeah. Right. Um, so yeah, following my grandpa around, uh, I was brought up a traditional way, where the grandparents raised the children, the grandchildren, while the parents go off and work. And my dad was in the service, and I, uh, so I followed the old man around. He was 83 when I was born, and he was already in service to the people, doing ceremony, healing work. Um, we also took care of the tribal horses, and uh, I just, you know, about from the time I could scramble around, we were hiking all over, picking herbs, and learning how to do ceremony for that and praying so we'd know what to do for the various people he would work with. So he was a healer. He yes. Was the... Yes, he learned from his mother. So there was a long history in that in your family? Yeah, right? it's, it's been generational. As far as I know, um, as far back as anybody can remember, um, my uh, grandfather was a nephew to uh, a medicine man in the late 1800s known as Nachal Daklin, who was uh, the prophet and the dreamer. And uh, there was a time uh, during the wars and the uh, massacres and all of that where the people were coming forward with these dreams and, and visions of, of this time now that we're having. And actually, um, Wavoka, the Paiute prophet, came and studied with my great great uncle for a period of time and out of all of that came the ghost dance but what we learned from all of that was that the time would arrive in this time of no time between energetic paradigms um, where the children of our enemies would, our ancestors would rise up again in the children of our enemies and uh, that kind of got turned around with the ghost dance after many many tailings and uh, so it ended up in a lot of massacres at that time but the elders have been watching for the time and when the 60s came about and all the hippies started coming to the reservations wanting to know what was going on and wearing their hair long and putting beads on they saw that that was that was one of the signs that they were looking for. And then we had, of course, we had the harmonic convergence. And, and each sign that's come to pass, they've shared a little more. A that little we're more. in a transition period from mm -hmm. a time when separation and, and fear are more the, right. the, the, right. the, the way people are right. into a time where cooperation mm -hmm. and collaboration yeah. and love. Uh -huh. Yeah. So what we believe and what I was taught is that there's seven different world paradigms that humanity will pass through and we've been through what we call the fourth world of separation and that's coming to an end that actually has come to an end we're in what we call the time of no time a time of purification where we're all learning that we have to come back to our grassroots we have to come back to the spirituality and it doesn't matter what tradition you are because if you boil it all down we still all come from the premise of love so one of the things that my grandpa taught me to do was not take the ceremonies of my people out into the world and, and teach those to others, but to teach them how to structure their own ceremony using some of the tools that we learned in our rituals so that they can reach their own. And a lot of the students that come and work with me I've got several now that have gone back to the roots and so they're studying the Sami tradition of, of Lapland and you know various other you know Druid, Celtic. Yeah know. all of them are coming yeah, together. Yeah it's all to, coming right. back up and um, so what I find is more my job is to remind people 
who they are, help them remember who they are, because it's all in our genetics, and we just have to tap into that. And, and it's just the process of the human experiment or the human mm -hmm. condition that we've forgotten to some extent right. or another, all right. of us to one extent right. or another. Yeah, and you know, everybody's familiar with the sense of deja vu, so what that is is that's a lot of this past life stuff coming up because we found ourselves in similar circumstances, and so it's like triggering little things so that we'll dig deeper, dig deeper deeper. And the energy, the planetary alignments and everything that are coming about are really promoting that as well. So the energies almost coming to the planet are more mm -hmm. heart-centered, more mm -hmm. loving. So yes. they're opening those centers in yes. human beings so we're more apt mm -hmm. to... Yeah, yeah. So in the elders, you know, it's funny because I just had a, a workshop and I was talking with a guy about the prophecies and he kept wanting to take the prophecies into the negative element, the negative element. And What I was taught about the prophecies was that prophecies tell us landmarks. They, they give us uh, signs to watch for, for various things. But where we take a prophecy, it's usually vague and poetic and everybody interprets it differently. So what I was taught was that if you're going to look for good, that's what you're going to find. And mm -hmm. if you're going to look for bad, that's what you're going to find. We're just, you know, energy same, same. That's how it attracts. So if we're all out there projecting the good stuff, then we can turn it around and it's going to be a positive future. And since we're only, you know, we just finished up the fourth world and we're supposed to be in seven worlds, well, you know, right. we got two more at least. Right. And three so more the fifth coming one is, is the uh, cleansing. Mm -hmm. And what's after that? Well, we had. Uh, we're doing this purification and what's happening with the the energies is that we're going into what's called the fifth world of peace and a lot of our uh, dormant abilities you know like the mental telepathy the self-healing abilities um, all of that's starting to come to pass we're getting a lot more people that are clairsentient and clairaudient you know seeing spirits and and being able to tap into their dreams and have lucid dreaming where they can actually determine the way that goes and what we're finding is that, you know, once a person has that shift in perspective, then anything's possible because they open themselves up to everything that's invisible and intangible. And all of a sudden it becomes possible. And we're having a lot more people um, that are embracing that, that we can come together and we can find uh, a commonality within our spiritual roots. Well, How can it be otherwise? It can't be. Right. It can't be. Right. Not if you want a planet and you want a future. Well, not because they're all the same. We all, mm -hmm. you know, we're all made of that that's same. That's it. Yeah, yeah, we're all the same. It's just where you pick a piece of infinity right. and say that's where it started, that's but it. actually that's started. It. And you know, and in right. actuality, time only exists here on Earth exactly. because without gravity, there is no time. Right. So or it's space an illusion. in that way. Yeah. yeah. So, so we make up all these. It's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like a combined agreement right. that we're going to come in here and this is the way it's going to be. Right. So. If that's the way it's going to be, why can't we determine while we're here how we're going to change and shift it? You know, everybody talks about karma and stuff. Well, what is that if that's not us deciding and making a forward movement mm -hmm. and creating our karma in every moment and being responsible with that and saying, okay, I choose to affirm life. I choose not to give energy to chaos, negativity, drama, drama, fear, fear. yeah. Because there's only really one kind of fear, and that fear is, am I going to be physically hurt? And if, if it doesn't fall into the parameters, you better get out of the way of the, the steam engine, then it's not a real fear, it's an illusion. It's something that we've created within ourselves by all this, this disconnection, by this um, isolation that we've created within ourselves that I have to be afraid of you, right? And, and you have to be afraid of me because we come from two different backgrounds. Well, well actually, well, now that I found out you're a valley girl, we're not that different. <laughs> <laughs> I've always yeah. thought so, but now that you're a valley girl, a two-week valley girl. I'm not girl. from the valley, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Downey. Right. <laughs> oh, my God. It's, I'm not claiming that we're... Right. Well, two weeks. I know the hospital. That's right, about no. it. But <laughs> if that's the worst mistake I've made this, this season, I'll, I'll be good to you. You should hear... <laughs> I don't know how I got the names, but usually I pronounce the names, especially like the, you know the Hindi names and mm -hmm. stuff, like mashed potatoes. So mm -hmm. I was hoping that I did better with you, and then at first thought I got your birthplace wrong, but, <laughs> but only by okay. two weeks. Only That's by okay. Two. Okay, so so we're coming into that experience where more right. you're you're you travel all over and mm -hmm. you do workshops and healing, and you see more and more people of all races, mm -hmm. religions, ages, colors, traditions, spiritual, you know 
histories mm -hmm. coming into that place of right. what I would call oneness or love. Right, right. Yeah, and well, it's, that's cool. it does my heart good. You know, I remember just 10 years ago walking down the street, and if I said hello to people on the street, they'd divert their eyes, they'd walk really fast past me. They didn't want any interchange. Now, I'm, you know, people stop me on the street. We talk, you know, and wow, you say hello fantastic. to people, and they yeah, smile, I, they I say hello that. back. We're coming back to center. We're coming back to balance is what's happening. And if you look at the seven worlds paradigm, what you're coming up with is kind of like, you know, if you look at the week, you got hump day. Wednesday. So the fourth world of separation was really the all-time low for humanity, and we had to pull ourselves out of it. Are we going to sink to our deepest depths? And we used to have a joke when I was a kid about Mother Earth being a Scorpio, because all her cycles ran this gambit, and here a Scorpio has to, if you know astrology, has to go all the way down there into the deep, dark secrets, the good and the bad, you know, and then they have to test all the waters out and then find their place in the middle of that and make it work. So um, what we're trying to do with the work that we're doing, and I say we because I work through an organization called Nowiki Begawa, which means House of Our Footprints. And House of Our Footprints. House of Our Footprints. And that, that alludes to the fact that as we're walking on our good mother, we have to tra travel lightly because we really want that harmony, that peace within ourselves and within our world. Um, so what we're trying to do is... Um, in my philosophy, everything's alive. The chair's alive, you know, the trees are alive, the rocks are alive. Um, the rock people were my, my first best friends, you know. They, they'd be singing to me and talking to me. And uh, then there's the animals, our animal guides. Animals are here to, to provide the confirmation from spirit that we're doing the right thing. Or, hey, look, you need to be over here paying attention to this. So there are enough things going on in, within this planet spiritually if we acknowledge that everything has spirit um, that we can per get the direction that we need and then it's up to us to do the footwork so we work with the ley lines of the earth and we recognize that just like the earth we have these magnetic lines within ourselves so we do a lot of work with the energies of the directions and then we teach people how to tap those how to recognize those so that like today if I'm having trouble with my family I'm gonna know to face that southeast direction and then I'm gonna have all the northwest which is the primal energy the strength of, of, of the animal magnetism that inner child you know before we lost all the trust and innocence and all that stuff that's going to be behind me, helping me with whatever this family situation is. So I know where to tap in for help, and I know where to turn to meet my confrontations. And I do that. I don't run away from my challenges. I see them as lessons for me to grow. And so I turn and I face them. And like I said, as long but as I'm going to get with a hit by a Mac truck. Yeah. a certain procedure yeah, it's where a, like, the wind is in your sails. Right, right. So, you know, you learn how to tack and all right. those things with the wind. And as long as uh, I'm not going to get hit by a Mack truck, you know, at that point I get out of the way. But I would say that would yeah. be, <laughs> instead of turning your body a little hair. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it's, you know, it's like how do we learn discernment, you know, yeah. when to hold them and when to fold them. Kind of. Yeah. And that's part of, you know, growing and, and right. you know, yeah. coming more into harmony so we right. know when disharmony is there. Yeah. You have to know what harmony is before you can right. really be clear on right. disharmony, or else everything's uh -huh. <laughs> you know, just a big yeah. mess. Yeah, well, and you know, there's another problem that is, uh, is, is starting to be uh, dissipate, dissipate, because what we're taught is that we, can't, we practice what's called non-interference. We can't help someone unless they ask for our opinion or our help. And um, so, so folks, you know, they, they're out there doing all kinds of things and I may be, these may be my kids and I may be in love with them and wanting to spare them from all the things that I see that are going to happen to them and yet those are the lessons they've chosen for themselves. I can't do that unless they come to me and say, hey mom, can you help me out here? So um, what we're seeing is though that a lot more people are having situations occur in their lives like, uh, oh, they'll see a ghost or, you know, they have this dream and it's like a repetitive dream. Or they just have this deep feeling of emptiness yeah, inside of them the that they haven't been able to right. fulfill with some whatever they've been practicing in their lives. So for some reason, spirit will put right in front of them, you know, something we're doing and there they'll be. And at that moment, 
that There's an open doorway way. of communication is opened and we can talk about it and we can do things. We, we help them construct their own rituals and ceremonies so that they can arrive at a place where they see themselves as sacred. Because really, when we start seeing our own selves as sacred and start respecting ourselves and having healthy boundaries to where we can communicate and yet not cross and, you know, uh, cross wiring to where I'm getting your gook and you're getting mine, then we are about the act of affirming life and creating life force that is affirming for the next seven generations. And it's a big deal. Yeah, it's very. And it's happening because you got yeah, people all happening. over the world starting to come to this. Yeah, and we see that a lot. I mean, yeah. literally, people come from yeah. all over the world who have slightly different stories on the mm -hmm. Earth plane, but basically, it's coming into yeah. that root, you yeah. know, one way or another. Yeah, and we've been really excited. In the last few years, we've had the privilege of coming together with the Kiro Incans, and which is another fulfilling prophecy. You know, the eagle condor flying together again. So we've been doing workshops with people like Alberto Villalodo and. My uncle works with uh, Oscar Quiero Masada, and so that the Apache... Yeah, Alberto actually, he really wanted to come on the show this yeah. year, and we didn't have any space. <laughs> and one of his students we ended up booking before, that John English, who wrote, uh -huh. just wrote a book. Yeah, yeah, he's coming on later in the yeah. year. So, yeah, a, it seems like a lot of, uh -huh. you know, that particular energy mm -hmm. seems to be coming forth. Because yeah. we're usually, you know, whatever guests we book, mm -hmm. that's the energy that seems to be rising up yeah. for them. Well, and I'm really kind of amazed, too, because in the last few years, in addition to doing that, we've been asked, like I'm doing presentations at the medical college down at UCSD. Uh, we do, um, we're more involved with the Permaculture Institute up in Northern California now, teaching people how to, to work sustainably with the land. And so, like, all the old ways are starting to come back in. And it's, it's like one of the most exciting right. times in history, as far as I can see. Yeah, I mean, you know, we always think, like you were saying earlier, about time. But, I mean, the old ways are the new ways. And, you know, it's just, how do we get harmony? Mm -hmm. You know, use all the modern tools, mm -hmm. but use them harmoniously. Right, right. You know? And I think what that's taking is that we have to, we have to go back to go forward in some respects. We have to return to Unwind. those Earth philosophies. It doesn't mean let's throw out all the technology and all of that. It's like, but how are we going to use it? How right. are we going to use it? Yeah, well, I think, you know, we were talking earlier about coming into a harmony. So uh -huh. we would use everything in harmony. Right. We treat everything mm -hmm. with that love and respect. Yeah. As, you yeah. know, we would recognize that the dolphins are brothers and sisters. Right. The tree, you know, instead of, not that we never, you know, cut a tree down. It's just right. that we would do it differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, yeah, and we see it happening all over. And, yeah. You know, after talking to people like you, it's just really exciting for us. So, so, and do you hold like, you know, just traveling and do workshops and and sweat lodges and all those um, kind of traditional type of things to? Yeah, we do a lot of that. Uh, ceremonial wise, what we do are what we call our Diani Hedawachi, the lunar festivals. Um, we do sweat lodges and different things like Women's Moon Lodge, and, and I do all the life rights passages uh, from birth and babies on up to crossing people over. Um, but what we try to do is we'll do workshops in different areas, and we try to incorporate these lunar ceremonies, because those are the ones that really tie us into the Earth's ley lines. And it's honoring the different energies that happen during the different cycles of the Earth. So we have 24 of those that we go out and do. And some are like one day, some are seven day. And um, it, it brings people to that sense of recognizing what they need to do for themselves. There's a process involved in anything that we do. There's release work that we do. There's assimilation that we do. And there has to be celebration in what we do. Yeah, it's got to be joyous and it's somewhere. Got, it's it all got to be in right. there. It's right. all got to be in there. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean, that, you know, that's you know, what happens a little sometimes and quite often religions or traditions after a while they lose the joy right because the experience of that love and that joy mm -hmm. and of being alive of being sacred and holy right. it starts to become just a path of doing the tradition right yeah and you even forget why you did them yeah you know, so, so what doing it the way my grandpa taught me it allows us to be very very flexible
right. because we'll have like a format that we know we need to use to build the energy. But the rituals that we'll select to necessarily do that will be based on the energies the of the people that gather. Right. Right. So it keeps it new and different each time. Right. Yeah, it's alive. Yeah, Instead and it becomes more like an interactive play kind of situation. Yeah, a creative, collaborative yeah. explosion. And that's what some. it has to be. It has to be co-created. Right. right, exactly. Yeah. So maybe what we'll do now is uh, we'll go to the uh, second video, the uh, Kate Wolf music video. Again, you know, we want to thank the Wolf family for giving us permission to, to show the Kate songs. They know how much we love them, and you know, we're just really honored to be able to do that. So it's Brother Warrior, Kate, Kate Wolf. beautiful thank you thank you again so we're back with Maria so you do a lot of interaction with with young people with children yes. why don't you talk a little bit because I know it means a lot to you yeah right now my passion is uh, right instilling rites of passage again for kids um, you know Native Americans traditionally are so great we'll start you know Celebrating, we'll celebrate anything really. Um, but <laughs> from the minute a kid's born, you know, they have their first moccasin ceremony when they st start walking. And, and as they're growing up, they're inducted into the societies and 
rites of passage, you know, like vision quests and the girls coming out ceremony when she hits puberty. And, and it's just, I don't see that. And what I see is that the, the family in mainstream society around the world, not just here in America, has slowly disintegrated you know, with the parents splitting up or both parents working, and the kids are pretty much left out there floundering on their own. And in actuality, what my grandpa taught me was, we have from the time a child is born until they hit puberty to instill everything we know, and then we pretty much have to turn it loose and just pray to God, spirit, whatever you want to call that force, that we did the right thing and that they got it and they're going to come out and they're going to be able to walk a good path that will make them a conscientious member of the community and yet find them fulfilled in their own life. And so we've started a program that uh, we call Heartfire, which is um, five rites of passage. And we've been taking kids and putting them through this, and we're having great success. And the largest number of kids that we're having the success with are the ones that have been diagnosed ADD, bipolar, schizophrenic. And it's really kind of interesting, because in the old days, Native America didn't have any uh, what we call mental illness, per se. I mean, if you heard voices and you were a kid, they started grooming you for priesthood. You learned how to discern what was fear and what was your actual spirit guides. So now you have all these kids that have been given this label, been put on medication, because science doesn't know what to do with them, and yet they're the next step in evolution. They don't have that forgetfulness like we had when we came in in our generation. They have a clearer channel, and yet because of what we've told them, because we don't... That they're sick. They're Instead sick. Of gifted, they're, they're sick. sick. Yeah. And so they're taught that this is bad, this is evil, this is... They can't have yeah, that. Yeah, the work of the devil in some religions. Yeah, so right. they try to stuff all that. And the rites of passages and the ritual that we teach them in the community that we provide for them helps them reach that realization that, no, you do have a viable lifestyle. As long as you listen to this and you can tell what's fear and what's positive guidance, then you can determine your own future. And how do people learn that after coming from a society that really is, it's a big mishmash with that? Well, I'll tell you, anybody that tells you anything negative in your head, I would ignore. It's a good okay? start, right? That's the best place to start. <laughs> it's a good if they're start. telling you something positive and they're trying to affirm who you are and get you to inspiring. look at empowerment, yeah. that's spirit guides, that's your higher self. However you want to choose to, guardian angels, choose to look at it. And um, another thing is that uh, the voices, okay, when we talk about the voices. Well, when I started hearing voices, um, I heard several. Uh, there's Nakia, who's the clan guardian, who's never been human in my lifetime. I have no knowledge of how he sounds. Um, he talks in my voice. When I hear him in my head, it's my voice. But the speech pattern's different. The pronunciation's different. The guttural emphasis is different. It's not the way I talk. When I hear my grandpa in my head, who I have a physical reference for, I hear his voice. So it's like, when you talk to yourself, if you talk to yourself out loud, you're praying. You know, if you hear these voices in your head, well, we have different aspects of ourselves, and they each can talk to us and bring us knowledge and insight. And there's, but there is that one part, that ego fear, that will do anything to get us to self sabotage by telling us you can't, um, it, you're stupid, uh, you know, whatever it can tell us, you know, to belittle us so that we won't even try. And there's a yeah, lot of... it just of, sucks the energy. Yeah, out of the and it life does. It sucks the, the energy and it sends us into depression to w the point where we have chemical imbalances. I don't know of one young woman between the ages of 13 and 30 at this point that does not have an irregular menstrual cycle. And that's not right. That's not right. That's because we're so far out of balance with this planet and the, the lunar aspects. It should not be happening. And um, Yeah, there's tremendous disharmony. Yeah. And yet, Energetically, water, right. you know, food. When we get them everything. back into ceremony and they're starting to tap these energetic fields, they're coming back. They're, the endometriosis is going down. 
Uh, they're not having the problems that they were having with the irregularity and the cramps and any of that. The young men, they're discovering that they have a cycle too. Males have a cycle just like w women do. It's a 33-day cycle as opposed to a 28-day cycle, but it's still a cycle where you guys have your energetic load period. And all humans have an energetic load period during the day. If you look at when you were born and, and, and you look at your day, you can see and chart where your energy drops. And so that's when you should be taking your meditation time. That's when you should be nurturing yourself, not out there in chaos trying yeah, to run yeah, around and get things right. done. Everything becomes a concept rather right. than a living reality. Right, right. And uh, so as they learn to take care of themselves and have healthy boundaries, and learn how to strip away that which is not theirs, the agenda of others that they've bought into through the years, that they had to be in this little tight box. Uh, as they start to learn that they can be outside that box and operate without those labels. And operate much lighter, much... Right, yeah. They're just doing magnificent things. I had a young man that's been studying with me for two years now that was diagnosed bipolar schizophrenic. And he started doing ceremony. He came to Sundance. He's been off his meds for a year now. He went out and he, he was looking for a job. And I told him, well, okay, you're into astronomy, you're into this, you're into that. Why aren't you applying for these jobs? And he said, oh, I can never get those jobs. And I'm like, why? Yeah, where'd you get, get that stuff. thought from? And plus, I mean, so what happens if you get turned down? But you right. never know if you don't ask. That's right. If you don't even try, right. you're never going to know. So he decided he would try. So he went out and he put in all these applications, and he got his dream job, never thinking he would ever get it. And he works for a big uh, planning company down in San Diego now. And he, he just did some big... Uh, uh, what do they call it? When you do the city planning and it's to, to maximize the flow with the land. Mm -hmm. um, and he did environmental this. Environmental impact. Yeah, environmental impact stuff. Yeah. And uh, so they did a 10 year study on how they were going to reintegrate San Diego County itself so it was back in flow with the harmonics of wow. the land. And they just won this huge award. That from worldwide competition for this, oh, that's and he was major in that project. Right. And so this kid's like flying high right, right now because everything that he was told about himself that he would never amount to, he has s far surpassed that. Right. And any expectations, and now yeah, he it was just, so self-limiting. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. And so now he has no expectations. And it just keeps getting better and better and better. Now, it doesn't mean he doesn't have his low days, but he now knows how to deal with that, and he feels empowered that he can handle that himself. No, a certain level of wall was mm. broken down. The prison's bigger. Right. And if the prison, you know, if the yeah. prison walls can keep getting bigger and yeah. bigger, you know, exactly. who knows what happens. Exactly. So that's my big passion. And my youngest son, he's a behavioral specialist for youth at risk programs. So we've got a grant writer that's now on the project. And oh, we're wow. getting ready to actually take this into some of the counties here in California and try to put it well, into effect there and see how yeah. far we can take it. Grab some of these kids at a little younger age, because I've been working with the primarily late teens, early 20s, and we want to get it back down to the love and you want to go period. through like traditional channels schools mm. even and yes yeah that'd be great yeah and so does it excited. seem to you like traditional channels are open to it are these kids a throwaway so they'll give you know, them to you anyhow <laughs> yeah we actually have heard from some tribes back east and you know the eastern tribes really all the tribes had it really bad about our religions and stuff, but the eastern tribes had it much harsher than, say, west of the Mississippi, because they had it for a hundred years more than the rest of us had it. So there are tribes back there that have no cognizant memory of their tradition. So, so we've they think heard their traditions out of a casino or something. Yes, more or less. <laughs> exactly. So we've <laughs> that got, must be blissful. <laughs> we've gotten contacted by tribes in Connecticut and New York, Maine. You know, it's interesting because we've talked about this on the show and uh, other places that uh, it's surprising to me with all the you know the interest in the casinos and all the money that's coming into you know the uh, American Indian community, why a lot of it isn't being funneled into health plans and you know these kind of traditional way plans, and I think. 
think it's just it's going to take some time for that to work its yeah. way through, too. You know, I think it kind of depends on the tribe itself because that is happening in some places. It is happening. On my, sure my reservation, so. our casino, which I think is the ugliest building I ever saw, just for the record, okay? Uh, <laughs> but they have built this huge health Clinic. Oh, they have done. Yeah, and the schools, they're oh, building that's great. schools. And, yeah, that's and we're great. trying and incorporating the money back into the tribe so that we can have more jobs. Because even with the casino and the industries that we have, and we're considered a fairly good tribe for status on unemployment, and our unemployment's still at like 60%. That's pretty high. You know? So that's, it's like... That makes for bad interactions yeah. with alcohol and, and a if lot you, of things. That's it, you know? I mean, I remember uh, 20 years ago going home and uh, our kids, the alcohol rate was starting at eight, nine years old, and by the time they were hitting puberty, 13, 14 years old, they couldn't get the alcohol for themselves. They were drinking antifreeze you know, to get brutal. high. Yeah, you know, brutal. we had babies being born without brains, cancer in our kids before they were even yeah, childbearing this years. Gets so whacked. That so yeah, terrible. so there's a lot of that. That the money from the casinos is really helping. Wow, is really fantastic. helping. Do you find that you know, like for projects like you, you're talking about here, that money is available to to become involved that way and to bring. You know, not so far. Not Because it so would far. seem like there's enormous yeah. sums of it, and you're yeah. probably not even asking for that much. I don't know. Much. A friend of mine told me that they saw a big lump of change coming our way for the program from one of the, the casinos, but it I don't It seems know. like it, you know. We'll see. Um, yeah, right. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. see. Yeah, but like I said, you know, it kind of has, if you watch the tribes, it kind of depends, because you also have reservations where this kind of stuff's not happening. The housing's not improving, and basically everybody's getting their money, but they're going out and buying a new car every year, and the kids are just drinking. So yeah, I know. the it takes jobs a while to have to change the momentum. Yeah, the jobs have to come into force. Um, there has to be something that stimulates them, and I think that's why it's so important to go back to the traditional ways because they need to find who they are. Right. Yeah. It's just yeah. They don't. It's yeah. just a big mess. I think in the yeah. for a lot of people. Right. You know, and then you know we've talked about. Then you get to the root that you know I'm this. I'm an Apache, right. and then you get to the what. You know, then what, what's the root before that? Mm -hmm. You know, that you're a human being. What's the root yeah. before, you know, yeah. that you're a spirit. Yeah. What's, you know, that you're God. Right. You know, that the Father and I, the goddess and I right. are one. I mean, so, yeah. you know, well, which we, tradition do we want to stop at? Right. Yeah. Well, well, we, we don't really a, want to stop at any of them. Yeah, we have a saying that, that uh, well, you know, Turtle Island, the United States, North America, South America, at one time was all connected to Europe and all of mm -hmm. Africa and all of that, and then they were split apart. And at that time, Creator said, split me into four and travel to the four directions. When the signs are right, come back together and bring me whole. And, and that's, that's what's, what's happening, happening right now. Right. That's what's and happening. you wanted to do, also, we talked about this earlier, some uh, Apache closing or a healing ceremony? Yeah, a well, I'd just one. like to share a little prayer. It's called yeah, okay. Our First Prayer of Life, Go ahead. and we use it for almost every ceremony. There's actually 64 of them, and it's just a simple little thing, and it's Ngozen Alwazana, Yal Alwazana, Dalitse Degoyana, Ngozen Ildzitsi, Pino Ichikase, Shishi Yukahi, Diane. And that means I come from the Earth Mother, I come from the Sky Father, I come into this circle to be all that I can be. I am all my relations. And this is my prayer, and I am grateful. And so it is. I hope. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. I think it's the first time we've had Apache on the show, so it's, it's exciting. It's <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so you do these ceremonies, and your passion at this point mm -hmm. is, is, you know, it's interesting because I really, literally, three or four guests recently have talked about who've been healers for a long time and psychics and, you know, just gone around and written books, and, and their passion seems to be working with children and yeah. getting people before they get so disharmonized right. yeah. and so in a bad momentum yeah. and so into alcohol and drugs mm -hmm. and from all the cultures, mm -hmm. you know, in all the countries. and. That you know, that must be like a real trend that's happening. Yeah. Is that we're all trying to, yeah. you know, get 
get closer to the root. I you know, think so. so. I think so. Well, you know, we have to invest in the kids. They are our future. And, you know, for so long now, we've been uh, putting them on the back burner. You know, we send them off to school, and then they come home and they watch TV or they play video games or whatever. But pretty much we don't have a lot of interaction with our kids anymore. And that's been changing over the last few years. But I know even when I had my kids, you know, both parents had to work um, to supply an income and give them a house, a roof over their head, because... I mean, something's got to happen to the financial structure that's going on. You know, that's got to shift here pretty soon, too, because it's just outrageous. People can't make a living. And we've gotten so disconnected from everything, the food that we eat. I mean, how many people say a prayer over their food anymore? You know, we're all in such a big hurry. Do we actually all sit down and eat together? Do we actually talk to each other? Or is the TV set going while we're doing it? So it's it's isolation that needs to be healed, the disconnection. Yeah, we talk about healing the heart, yeah. healing the connection, mm-hmm. healing the yeah. fact that we're all one. Yeah, and everybody's pulled like all their heart energy into their that chakra, you know, and kind of closed it down because we think, oh, to not get hurt, I got to pull it all the way in. Well, no, that just keeps compounding the hurt, you know, like the 20th power or whatever. It's by opening our heart and sending it out there that we heal. And well, we really, we want to, you know, we've talked about this a lot. We want to feel love and share it. Yeah. I mean, then what's the point otherwise? Yeah. It's not to be rich. It's not to, you know, have yeah. a certain tradition. It's not yeah. to be a good Christian or a good right. Buddhist or a good Jew or, right. you know, good anything. It's to feel yeah. love and share it. Yeah. And the whole thing about that feeling love and sharing, though, is that we have to do it without expectation. Right. Because if well, that's we do not, it, yeah, right. you know, if we're expecting right. something back, like they have to love us or they have to do something, then we're always going to be disappointed. Right. But if we're doing it because I feel such tremendous love in my An heart overflow. for you, Alan, right. I just want to do this for you. Right then what's going to happen is it's going to come back tenfold. Maybe not from you, but from ten other yeah, people. Yeah, it, it starts that energy yeah. cycling. It's, you know, yeah. the greatest movie that I think was ever made was Pay It Forward. I think that's spectacular. Yeah, now, whoever great. wrote that thought Indian, okay? Because <laughs> it's, uh, it's definitely the premise that we've got You know, it's part of every tradition. You know, treat others as you mm-hmm. want to be treated. I, yeah. mean, it's, you know, I mean, it's yeah. at the root of a lot of, yeah. you know, the, the experiences that people yeah. had. Yeah. You know, I mean, we talk about that a lot. Is mm-hmm. You know, we try to... You know, as part of an organization, the Bridging Heaven and Earth Foundation. Yeah. The, really, the th- three things we talk about is that it's it's infinite, it's right. inclusive, right. and you know, in terms of human manifestation, right. to treat others as we'd like to be treated. Right. You know? yeah. And that would be a fairly good start. And you know, that having, would be it. Yeah. yeah. You know, help somebody if you can. If it's within your power, do it. Right. Yeah. And so you see in your travels and, and all your ways around that, that is really there's a momentum building for mm-hmm. that in all oh, cultures and yeah. all religions with all peoples mm-hmm. is that that hunger is driving people mm-hmm. to know that root. Yes. Yeah. I see it. And you know, I I mean in the course of six months. Uh, we have an internet newsletter that we started God, a long time ago, but in the course of six months, in 1999, we went from 2,000 subscribers to over 450,000 worldwide. Wow, 450,000 yeah. is a lot of subscribers. So it, it blew me away. Boy, if you ask them for a dollar a piece, you, <laughs> <laughs> you could have new center set up. Now there's a plan. Yeah. Wow, so, that's a that's a big subscription yeah. list. So, I would say that's fantastic. Yeah. In six months from two thousand. Six months. Wow, what are you offering on there? I, I, I didn't see it. No, that's, I was just kidding. You. That's fantastic. You get it, you know. Yeah, yeah that's fantastic. That is really yeah. wonderful. So, so if that grows just, exponentially, you can start running for office. <laughs> I mean, oh, no, thank no, you. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not where you belong. That was, I, not I, yet. We're not ready to have that kind I of, was political once. It didn't work for me. No, I know. I know. It's, a lot of people were. It didn't really work. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, we're tremendously excited. I mean, you know, we, you heard at the meeting, I mean, just the level of, of people that are coming in right, doing the yeah. show of all different 
religions and traditions right. and you I know, healers great. and psychics. And I think it's great. Yeah, I did some checking. I went on the internet before we came on and I was checking areas about where you are and where you aren't. So when I get back up to Northern California, I'm going to be talking to Blue Streak to all the stations. <laughs> right. You guys really need this. Right. Yeah, and, I, and you know, we, we get to 450,000 stations. There you there. go. If, if everyone on your list does There you that. go. You guys petition your local station. <laughs> Actually, I don't. you get Gloria from Heaven Letters who's coming on later. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she did that in her newsletter, but I don't think she's got Fortune 50,000 <laughs> on it. So I think, you know, surprisingly enough, we're coming to the end of the show. So, you know, we've done it again. And, uh, you know, really it's all about the love. You know it. We know it. You know, whatever words you use, whatever, you know, place on, on the wheel you're coming from. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really at the center. It's really at the heart. And we all know that. We all want to be there. And there's really, you know, like Maria said over and over again, there's nothing stopping us except our illusion about that there is something stopping us. So and the more we all do that, the more it's going to happen. So as we normally say, if you want any information about Maria, about, you know, Kate's music, you can go to the Bridging website. You can call me, Alan, 805-687-2053, 805-687-2053. Good night. We love you. Let's get, let's go to the love. All right? Good night.